This is it. Today's the day. Vcash. So much Vcash. Eight cores. No shenanigans. The CPU slightly off center in the box. What's going on? Did he repackage it? I think he did. I think he repackaged it. This is the CPU for gamers for this generation for AM5. And there's a lot to un uh, unpack. There's a lot to talk about. It's some obvious things, but also some not so obvious things. The expectations are really high, and because of that, um, there may be some mixed messaging. I, I, don't, I don't know. Let's dive in. The Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is a CPU for gamers. It's a piece of hardware built for high-end entertainment. I mean, really, I don't want to say a piece of hardware built for entertainment because AMD's been doing consoles. And if you look at consoles as a thing a gamer would buy, and you look at this as a thing a gamer would buy, this is a really high-end thing as compared with a console. And if you look at the 5800X 3D, AMD took a chance on that. Are there going to be enough gamers to buy that to make it a worthwhile operation? Manufacturing a processor like this is a worldwide operation. You have design and all the R&D and everything that AMD does, which is not insignificant, and then you have all of the engineering prowess of TSMC, plus the packaging, plus the physical substrate, plus all of the other stuff, plus companies like Asmedia coming together to help deliver what is ultimately something that completely raffle stomped the whole gaming industry. I'm talking, of course, about the 5800X 3D. It came in and completely dominated. And so the bars for everything AMD 3D vCache are set exceptionally high. And maybe there was some confusion when the 7950X 3D launched, which gave you the best of both worlds. Tons of high core performance, 16 cores, but also eight of those cores had 3D vCache. Only eight of the cores had 3D vCache because it doesn't really make sense to do 16 cores for vCache. Everything basically worked as advertised there, but maybe gamers are a little bit confused. Well, no more. This CPU is launching just a couple of weeks after the other CPU, and this is the gamer CPU. This will enable you to do something like the 5800X 3D on AM5 with DDR5 and all the new PCIe 5 fixins. But in a way, AMD really is kind of competing with itself because gamers are looking at the 5800X 3D and they're saying, well, that's still a really attractive thing to buy. It's a relatively inexpensive CPU. I mean, you can regularly buy the 5800X 3D with its vCache for three to $400, well below its launch price of you know, quite a while ago. Or you can pick up the Ryzen 7, which still is a relatively modest pricing from AMD for what it is. Now, when the 7950X 3D with vCache launched, it needed a little bit of explanation. How does the operating system Windows manage scheduling a game correctly? Does the game prefer uh, CPU cores that clock higher? That's one of your two CCDs. So you needed some software, you needed some core parking. There was a lot of questioning and uncertainty around that. I got to join Mr. Gordon Ung with PC World and we got to talk about it. I think we were both surprised by the amount of confusion around those sorts of tools when we're talking about a 16 core CPU. Why would why would AMD muddy the water with something like that? Well, with the 7800X 3D, you don't need any of that. You don't need any special core parking. You don't need any drivers. You don't have to do anything special with the operating system. It's plug and play. You plug it in and everything is running on a core that has 3D vCache. You've only got eight cores instead of 16, but it's gonna run and it's gonna run really well. In the box, you get the processor. It's a Ryzen 7 processor. You're gonna need cooling. You're gonna need a good tower cooler or a good AIO cooler to, to pair with this. When you're running indie gems with this CPU, things like Dwarf Fortress and even Factorio, you will see insane performance improvements, even over the 5800X 3D. For mainstream games, let's take a look at those. All right, so it's very important that you understand how extensively I've stacked the deck against AMD and they still managed to pull out a win in most scenarios. Our test system here, this is based around the MSI Godlike Z790 with the fastest memory that I can get my hands on. It has the fastest storage. We've tested the 7900 XTX, the reference version, as well as the Zotac 4090 in this system. It is insanely fast. It's a great system, runs really awesome, but 
it is possible to reproduce our results with this. This is made from an inexpensive B650 MSI mortar motherboard and a 280 millimeter AIO from Fractal. DDR5-6000 from G-Skill as opposed to the DDR5-8000 kit, which is not 100% stable at 8000, but it's close, it's really close. <laughs> More on that in a minute in the Door Fortress results. <laughs> Let's take a look at the performance. As we step through games new and old, starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider as we usually do, 1080p, yes of course the 7800X3D is pulling ahead and my gosh, look at those 1% lows. It's a significant head and shoulders improvement over the 5800X3D, but the 5800X3D was an even bigger improvement when it came out. So I think some people will be disappointed because the 7800X3D was not so much farther away from everything else as the 5800X3D was when it launched. Not to worry, we, uh, we, there's some things we can unpack here. As we go through the list of our 1080p games, uh, you know, it's the usual suspects that are the wins for Intel. Things like Cyberpunk 2077, just for whatever reason, seems to like an Intel platform a little bit better. Not to say that the difference between 194 FPS with our new processor from AMD and 200 FPS from the 13900 system is uh, literally unplayable on Team Red. It's, it's actually quite good. The 1% lows are markedly better at 1080p on this system on Team Blue. For games like Borderlands 3, Intel, AMD, it's a pretty close race. Deus Ex Mankind divided, uh, okay, our 7800X3D manages to pull out a win here. That is a huge improvement over the 5800X3D. And even though for the 1% lows, Intel does manage to eke out a win there, very slight 3 FPS, that is again a huge improvement over the 5800X3D. New platform, new faster memory, new everything, uh, it runs a little better. Film at 11. Now there's going to be a million benchmarks and a million reviews and everything else at 1080p. Our own stuff at 1080p shows the 7800X3D is very, very impressive. But, the detractors say, at 1440p, all of those gains are erased. Ah, well, that's not untrue, but that's a two-way street. Let's take a closer look at those 1440p results, because I think that's where it gets interesting. First, at 1440p, there's no clear dominating wins for either processor. Surprisingly, maybe with Horizon Zero Dawn, knowing the history of Horizon Zero Dawn and you know its launch, and then and then it sort of favored Intel, it got some optimizations. But 1440p, our 7800X3D is pulling ahead pretty consistently. And even with games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which a lot of people will look at and say, "Look, the performance is exactly identical at 1440p. You've gained nothing." I would say, look at the 1% lows. Feel the actual gameplay. The 7800X3D is easier to deal with from an operating system level than something like the 7950X3D that has you know, a mixed core configuration. By that same token, it's easier to deal with versus uh, you know, Alder Lake or Raptor Lake where they've got the mixed P and E cores. They're just eight cores that are all the same. You've only got eight cores, so you've got less headroom to do stuff in the background, but if you're not doing a lot of stuff in the background, then it doesn't really matter. The one perhaps notable exception I would call out is Borderlands 3, 0.1% lows, was better on Intel, but I noticed when these were, you know, in the data collection part, that these seem to occur during level loads. So as assets come in, for some reason, on the Intel platform, it's able to deal with that a little better than the AMD platform. It's probably a different code path, like the game is doing something a little different on one platform versus another, but in terms of what you experience during gameplay, you don't really notice. Even plucky little Cyberpunk 2077 manages to maintain over 139 FPS on the 7800X3D. It's, uh, it's a minor victory for our super juiced, roided out 13900, but the fact that we can get there with a modest commodity system from AMD, uh, that's what I want you to take away from this, is you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get that gaming experience. You can, you can do that with the 7900 XTX on a plucky little inexpensive B650 motherboard and a plucky little eight core processor. Now, as for future proofing, okay, eight cores tomorrow, I don't know. But it could also be that next generation graphics makes the story of 1080p the story of 1440p, meaning that the huge performance deltas that we see at 1080 may translate to 1440 when we have even faster graphics cards. But Game developers are also taking advantage of huge textures and loads of VRAM and all of that fun stuff. And so if they do take advantage of huge textures, then I can assure you that the extra cash on the processor is not going to make that much of a difference overall in this whole 1440p versus 1080p story. It's going to probably continue to be a little bit of a wash. 
But the bottom line is that the 7800X3D system can cost significantly less than an absolute top tier i9, the same way that the 7900XTX costs much less than the 4090. And yeah, the 4090 is a faster card, but the 7900XTX is almost as fast for a lot less money. Now for Dwarf Fortress doing a thousand year world generation, the 7800X3D was four minutes faster than the 5800X3D. That is not insignificant. Our 13900 with all of its juiced roided out craziness, uh, it crashed and it crashed and it crashed. And so it was not perfectly stable with Dwarf Fortress, but it, it managed to get through all of the other gaming benchmarks. So I guess if you're into uh, a computer debug simulator, <laughs> Maybe Intel would be a better choice in, in that scenario if you're going to go for the, the crazy memory and the crazy everything else. You don't, you don't have to. You can have a perfectly reasonable gaming experience being a reasonable person with Intel. But I'm showing you this because it's like in the absolute best case scenario with Intel, this is what you can expect. And you're basically at parity with the 7800X3D on an inexpensive commodity system. You see, you get... <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's kind of... Uh. I'll also throw in a quick note about Stellaris. It's hard to benchmark Stellaris in any kind of a consistent way, but late game, it really sort of bogs down. For me, the performance between the 7800X3D and the 7950X3D was very, very similar. The 7950X3D, I think, was a little faster, but in late game, uh, the time between turns and the complicated thing for my particular saves were running dramatically better on the processors with vCache versus any processor from, from either team without vCache and head and shoulders better than the 5800X3D. I've also included our artificial benchmarks, things like V-Ray, again, you know, more cores, more better, makes sense, and 3D Mark and Fire Strike and everything. Everything that lines up about where you'd expect for this processor. There weren't really any surprises with any of that, so it should be in line with your expectations. So what do these numbers mean for gamers? Well, before we get to gamers, I just want to say, if you're a productivity user, a power user, a Linux user, somebody that feels like they need more than eight cores, you want to move up to 12 or 16 cores, but you still want vCache, AMD does have an option for you. If you feel like you don't game enough to justify the vCache cost, and it's a choice of 12 cores or the 7800X3D, if you're not a gamer, then you probably don't need the 3D vCache. The 3D vCache doesn't really help you for most things, you know, compiling, workloads, AMD has sized the cache correctly for their more mainstream processors. So choosing the right processor really depends on the workload that you're going for. And for a mixed workload, with some pretty serious gaming for high-end hardware, you're not gonna beat the 7950X3D. If you're looking for the highest-end gaming machine with an emphasis on gaming, with a higher-end GPU, but you don't feel like you need to splurge to splash out, you know, for that 7950X3D, you're not going to be disappointed with the 7800X3D. Really, the only thing you got to think about is the 5800X3D, because that's also pretty much true of the 5800X3D as well. I mean, now, honestly, is the time to buy the 5800X3D because it's relatively inexpensive for the raffle-stomping monster powerhouse gaming CPU that it is. What you get by upgrading to the 7800X3D is DDR5, newer platform, the motherboard's probably going to be more upgradable. You're going to be able to upgrade to the 8000 or the 9000, you know, whatever comes next with AM5, DDR5. And if you're an enthusiast, uh, those things are probably important to you. But if you want a really insane gaming machine right now that will flood a, even a 4090, the highest end GPU that you can get, with frames, the 1500X3D is still going to do it because it's that good. The 7800X3D is better. Sure, no question, but it's not as raffle stompingly better as the 5800X3D was when it entered the scene. And that sounds like a negative, but that's actually a real positive that AMD has been able to completely take over the universe here in a very short time. I mean, Zen just launched yesterday and AMD is dominating with just making products after product after product after product. It's like, oh yeah, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And gamers want vCash, all right, let's give them vCash. Ah! I mean, it's madness, it's pure madness. And I love to see AMD succeed with the mad science. If you've got a 5800X3D, probably wouldn't upgrade though. But if you're thinking about building a gaming machine, 
you don't want 12 or 16 cores, it's a no-brainer. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. I got cores for days, or I got cash for days, or I got cores and cash for days. Uh, maybe he doesn't care. They, they, they've got a, an option for all seasons. It's just, it's madness. Madness. All right, that's enough rambling. I'm out of here.